Welcome, all you podcasters, to Wisdom Wednesday with Super Joe Pardo. That's me. Uh, we're here on the Indie Pod Daily Show, uh, pretty much daily for the most part. Uh, and I have a great guest here, an icon in our community, and uh, somebody who has a lot to say when it comes to to reaching a demographic that is not your own and is a, d quite a bit different. So I'm looking forward to, to kind of expanding on the conversation that we had from last week. If you didn't go, if you didn't listen to, uh, to uh, Reverend Ken, excuse me, Kevin, uh, <laughs> Reverend Ken Blanchard and me uh, talk and I uh, talk last week all about uh, never being too old to podcast. This is kind of an extension on that. And, it, it, and I wrote back to school because, well, we, a lot of us, especially here in the Northeast, are starting to go back to school and uh, we thought maybe we could kind of work in some of those things. So if you have any questions based around going back to school, digitizing the workflow for your kids, for your, for your sanity's sake, uh, and or, you know, trying to reach a market that isn't of your own uh, you know, for, that you are a part of, uh, this, this is, this is definitely where you want to be. Now, before we get into it, Icon 6 is happening September 12th and 13th. It's happening on Zoom. So we will all be able to face, see each other face to face. We'll have, uh, breakout rooms for the workshops and, uh, it's an 80s theme. So bring your 80s, uh, you know, 80s, swag stuff uh, attire dress hair whatever you got uh it'll be it's going to be a fun time uh to get dressed up have some fun answer some trivia questions and learn a whole lot about podcasting we have over 30 podcasters speaking across the two days two workshops time for lunch uh and and time to network and grow our community uh and and who like getting to know each other in the process so uh it's going to be the way that we do icon events you know one room everybody gets to to, to see each other and, and rub elbows and there'll be networking time and all that stuff baked into it so go to indiepodcasters.com slash icon six to learn more and uh prices will be going up on sunday at 8 p.m eastern so if you haven't bought your ticket yet now is the time to go and buy your icon six ticket before it goes up on sunday uh, what else? What else? What else? We have uh, the IndiePod University. If you haven't heard about it, it's where you can launch, grow, and monetize your podcast with other podcasters, other entrepreneurs, uh, and really solidify your abilities to get the, the, the right answers, the best answers, uh, the greatest answers uh, from, from me as well as the rest of our private community over at the university. Uh, so go to IndiePodU.com to learn more and sign up. And don't forget, uh, IndiePod, you, if you want to win a, uh, a free ride into the IndiePod University. We are doing that on Friday with Free Ride Fridays. Go to indie, IndiePodcasters.com slash Graham. Hit that uh, follow button for the IndiePod, at IndiePodCon on Instagram, and uh, you can you will be entered in to win a free ride into the IndiePod University. All right, today is Wisdom Wednesday, so our guest is is icon dr stephen green what's going on stephen green <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm channeling my wisdom here <laughs> yes yes so, well you know i, I feel like I you got a hundred things going basis. on i think i'm yeah. speaking at icon six aren't i i uh i believe so i i i'm like 90 percent. i'm looking it up right I, this I, second because I, 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 am, I think i am but i'm uh, like 90 percent sure you're let's, on let's make the, sure yeah <laughs> you are you you are so you're uh third up in the speaking lineup oh, okay. All right. uh creating viral content for your audience that's what it I was a working title yes. uh so hopefully if that's what you're speaking on then awesome if not let me know and i will I'll, get that I'll, working title yeah. fixed <laughs> you're like, I'm, oh, I gotta I'm looking hold on, forward hold on. to it write I, uh, that down write that down uh, <laughs> hang on, hang on. uh no, no to self yeah. <laughs> Creating viral content for your audience. Love it, love it, love it. Looking forward to that. Uh, but today we're talking, uh, we're ta we're talking about podcasting and and reaching out to an audience that is not of our own generation, our own like background, and and mm -hmm. and et cetera, et cetera. So, um, well, first of all, for anyone who doesn't know, this, 
you know, give some background on, on your business and, and how you got into podcasting. Yeah. So uh, I am a career educator. I have been in education 35 years. Uh, I have been a teacher. I've been a college professor. I have run a private tutoring and academic support company, which is what I presently do. It's called Make the Grade. Hence, the name of the podcast is the Make the Grade Educational Podcast. Ta-da. Um, the brief history is I ha was a longtime blogger. I was doing a lot of writing uh, topically about what I was, you know, educational stuff, study skills, <clears throat> maximizing your study ability at home, test prep, so on and so on. <clears throat> and what I was trying to do is find ways to bring the blogs to life. So I started doing videos of me essentially kind of reading the blogs and animating them a little bit, which was a pretty natural handoff into the podcasting world. So uh, that that's the short version of how it happened. Yeah. So so yeah, so you you run your own private com uh, you know paid community, right? Mm -hmm. You membership have membership community, you, yep. Yeah, membership commu community community. It's called I don't the know Success we're Community. Yeah, the Make the Great Success Community. Yeah, so uh, you have that. You have your own um, tutoring, you know, students, uh, client, I guess clients, student clients. I like um, to call them proteges. Proteges, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh, I like students that. Students is like probably that. yeah. <laughs> students is probably the best word, really. Yeah, it's probably the more correct word. Yeah, <laughs> the more acceptable yeah. word. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you know, so so when it comes to when it comes to podcasting, like you're trying to reach. Uh, I guess a couple different demographics at once, right? From mm -hmm. maybe reaching out to some of the kids that need that, you know, that want to that self-identify to the parents uh, that that identify that they need, you know, help. Um, and you're you're also running a conference too soon. Aren't I am coming running. Up here. Yeah, I yeah, I'm, I'm not as busy as you, but I'm pretty busy. Ah, you are. Come one on, and now, half, you are one and a half arm paper hanger over here. Uh, Here's my challenge, and I, I imagine other businesses have this, is I, where I provide my actual deliverable service, in some cases, is not the same as the people who pay for the service. So specifically, I need to market to the parents, but I'm mm. delivering the service more directly to the children, not four years old. Typically, my demographic is fifth, sixth graders up to college students, so typically 10 years old and older, uh, but an 11 year old isn't going to seek out or, or, or have the wherewithal to hire somebody like me. So the marketing essentially goes to the parents. The service delivery often goes to the children. So it, it's not a disconnect, but it creates almost like two things you have to do. Most of the information in my podcast vis-a-vis uh, -vis the blogs is, is not salesy at all. It's information. So I've always come from the school of thought of lead with quality content. So you position yourself as some amount of expert in your field, an expert in your topic. So when the need arises, hopefully I'm front of mind or close to front of mind to provide the service. Uh, so it's a long game. Uh, the podcast plays beautifully into that. And the main reason is because it's evergreen material. Uh, every once in a while, uh, what, I, what happens with me is uh, I'll have a conversation with a parent and I'm in, I think I'm in, a, my next podcast is episode 85. So in about a year, I've, I've got 84 published. Um, but pretty much, although things cycle, I've covered poor, more or less everything I need to talk about in education at least once. So in other words, let's say you call me up, hey, Steve, you know, my kid's having trouble with X, Y, Z. We could have a conversation about it. Say, listen, you know what would really help you? You should, I'm going to refer you, I'm going to send you a link to my podcast episode 35, which is where I spend a little bit of time, dive deeper into this. Um, and that's one of the ways I've built up the following and the subscriber role is just by direct. Now, of course, it's not the fastest way to, you know, build a following and, and you know, go viral. But what it does is, and it's accomplished successfully, is it's a credibility piece. So people are saying, hey, when did you put this podcast out? I put it out last year. Oh, well, you know, you're not like somebody who just jumped into this yesterday. Uh, so it, it, it enables that to happen. Plus, it just it gives you content base, right? I mean, a lot of people doing what we do create big 
broad macro sort of content. And then we take it and we slice it down and we repurpose it all kinds of ways. Um, so the, the podcast, the blog are, are a, a source of 30 second video clips, 30 second audio clips, uh, memes. I never quite understood what that word meant, but um, me, 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 right, me, right. Like, the, uh, like, me, 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 all me. About, I all about. Okay, well, like, I want the attention. I somehow, I, at least I, I assume that's what it means. <laughs> I guess I don't know. I, but you know, like yeah. like a little quote box or something, you know, of like, you know, hey, you know, quote from episode 78 of the Big Three podcast or what have you. Uh, but that that's that's really where it comes from. You know, I'm not going to tell you I'm the world's most technical person. I'm not the world's most cutting edge, although I am a gadget guy. So, you know, I do. I got a nice mic. And yeah, I think you can identify with that, Joe. So um, gadget guys of the world and women unite. But uh, so I, I do like it to sound good. I do like the processing and the production to be <laughs> quality. But I'm not really super overly concerned about scripting it or, or things of that nature. It's, it's just me talking about what I'm comfortable talking about because I've done it for so long that it's kind of second nature. Uh, but, but to kind of get back to the original point is I'm trying to produce content that I think is going to appeal to the parents. Now, in my case, which is sort of what we led in with, is a lot of these parents are 25, 30 years younger than me. Uh, or 20 for sure. It, it, and that's enough to be almost a completely different generation. These are all very phone-based. Uh, you know, they're doing everything, you know, listening on the phone, doing stuff on the phone, looking stuff off on the phone, which isn't what I was kind of cut my teeth in, so to speak. Um, so I've had to learn how to deal with that, not in a negative way, just, you know, from a, a point of fact of being able to do business in a digital world. Right now, fortunately, I've had some good mentors, uh, yourself included. I appreciate that. So it isn't like I can't. I'm not going to sit here and tell you, people. If you really want to get good at this, don't try to figure it out on your own. I mean, if if you're asking for advice, you go to people that you know can teach you and help you, because it just shortcuts it to such a degree. I mean, a year. What, when was Icon Five? It was that was a year, almost a year ago. Yeah, now. it was like September yeah. 10th, 11th, right? Uh, I, something like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I walked into that room in Lang City and, and had to get lost in the hotel. That's another story. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and everybody else there. Um, I, I really didn't know what I was doing in terms of the podcasting world. And there were people there, like in the Podcasting Hall of Fame, and had 48,000 followers and gazillion downloads. And, and I, I don't want to say it was intimidating, hmm. uh, but, but it, was, it, it was clear that there were levels way beyond where I was. Um, in terms of, of, of being prolific and being professional and being your messaging and even your intro. The one guy gave a talk, it really hit home with me on your intro. You know, are you going to waste the first 45 seconds of your podcast just having a bunch of music that people may or may not care about? So, I mean, um, in my case, you know, <laughs> I well, think it's about four seconds, but before I start coming in, but, but, five but seconds. The, but the, the, my, my point is that it's, I didn't even think about it. It was like, I was like, I was just, when I started doing the podcast, all I thought about was content. Like all I was thinking about was the deliverable. What's yep. the point? What's the messages? What am I really trying to educate, teach people uh, through this conversation? One, well, a unilateral, but a conversation sort of. And people started bringing up all these ideas. You know, what's your intro? What's your outro? What's your pacing? You know, do you vary your voice? Do you get soft and loud? Do you get excited? Do you get... I mean, I just like, I don't know. <laughs> just never thought about it. So, um, but, you know, you learn as you go, but, but you accelerate that tremendously by, by getting advice and, and counsel from people that are much more experienced than you. So it's kind of a plug for Icon 6, but it's really a plug for listening and seeking out people that, uh, that are mentors, you know, and can help you or are willing to help you. So I think uh, finding the ones that that you identify with, too, uh, is really is really important. Right. Because that's mm -hmm. who you're going to want to listen to, not just like, oh, he's you know, this person's like the greatest at the blah, 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 blah thing with the podcast. But like the podcast is about something that is like so right. not you or in your realm of like caring that, you know, and, and the way they talk and the way they uh, teach is not in it's just not in line with you. So you tend to not want to listen. So, you know, well, it, create, yeah. it creates a bigger issue there. Yeah. And there's there the, another thing I've learned is it's really, really 
really like to the fourth power important to understand what your audience wants. Yeah. The, the, you know, I'm sure there's really, really good podcasts that are super well produced, have tremendously great content that don't get listened to very much because they're not, they're not, they're off base with what the person who's producing them uh, is delivering to the people that want to hear it. Right. Um, and that's not, you know, like the worst thing that can happen in the world, but if you're going to put all that effort in, so I, you know, and I've spoken about this at, at a lot of these things is, is I do a lot of polling in my community. I just ask people straight up, you know, what do you want to hear about? What's, what's on your mind? What, what's concerning you? Uh, and, and, you know, that's been the source probably of half of my content. Now it hasn't been hard in the last five months, <laughs> uh, you know, because of what's been going on, the, the whole meltdown of the, of the Western hemisphere, but it's hit education in a particularly odd way. I mean, there's obviously, I don't, I don't really get political at all, but you know, the whole COVID thing is, you know, has hit economics, it's hit just home life and education's a major part of that because you got people, parents who basically had to become teachers without any notice, any warning. And some of them just didn't want to do it and yeah. struggled. And, and so that created a huge amount of content. I did a whole series of live streams that a bunch of them became podcasts just on trying to help people just create structure in, in their learning environment at home uh, for weeks. I mean, I, I did like 14 of them over seven or eight weeks. Uh, and, and then that led to products I created. I actually created digital products that I was marketing that people are still buying to solve these problems. So people were coming to me and say, hey, we just don't know what to do. You know, I'm trying to do my job, right? I got, I'm, I'm, I'm whatever, I'm whatever, right? Salesperson, accountant, lawyer. I'm at like my desk. My kids are over here screaming and yelling because they're tired of sitting at the computer after four hours. I can't get anything done. My boss is on my back. It, it was a whole giant ripple effect. So you didn't, it wasn't like I had to ask people to know that was an issue. But what I was trying to do was get the micro pieces of it. Like, what were the solutions? What was going to help people solve these problems and be a provider of solutions, not just somebody who was restating, not really the obvious, but kind of the obvious of what the problem was or is. Right, right. You know what I mean? And I think, I think you know, if, if, if the question here is, you know, you're starting a podcast or you're a newer podcast or trying to pick a topic – or refining your topic, or maybe your topic drifts over time. Um, I think being responsive and in touch with your audience, I, it, at least in my case, has has really been a game changer. I, I, I would even take it to that extreme. Um, I think it also depends, and I'm not sure how you feel about this, Joe, but I think it depends which what the purpose of your podcast is. I mean, as you mentioned, my you know the only I don't really monetize my podcast. I have a few sponsors. Um, so it, it, it's, it's better than break even a little bit, but I really use the podcast to build up credibility, um, and to build up a brand, you know, my own brand. So then when I could go to try to sell people, my products and my membership community, the, the resistance point is hopefully none. <laughs> um, and it works, but it takes time. It's a slow, it's a slow, long process. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I, like you said earlier, like when you you know when people ask like, oh, how long have you been pod, you know, how long has the podcast been around for? And you're like, oh, a year or, or two years or five years or something. It's like, oh, well, obviously you're not going around away any anytime soon, right? And you're more committed. You're showing that, that level of commitment to what you're doing, right? It's not like, yes. oh, I did this podcast, and I did this type of podcast, and blah 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 blah. Like right down the line, right? It's it's like, here's, this is what I do. And here's the podcast and here's the proof. And here's, you know, mm -hmm. you can dive in and start learning, uh, bit by bit by bit right there. And there's, you know, then there's the proof for it. I'll tell you something interesting too, cause I'm a numbers guy and I'm, I'm an analytics guy. What do they, what do they call it in baseball? The, uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, well, the you, money ball thing. Yeah. Money ball, right, right, right. Well, yeah. So, okay. Just to sort of throw this up, I could take a blog and literally read it as a podcast and take that and put it as a video. And now you've got almost identical content in three very different platforms, right? Yep. 95% of the time, you want to guess which one gets the most engagement? 
Uh, the video? Yeah, the video, right? Yeah. Now, it's probably the same for you because you're, you know, you're super strong with video too. The engagement part, yeah. I mean, podcasting, just to record and put it out there, it's almost like speaking into a void even if you know you have lots of people listening because unless yep. they're sending you lots of emails – Right, right, or right. Or interacting so, in a community of some sort, like it's not, it's not instantaneous, like right now. Right now, I don't know if it's because YouTube's the searchability engine. You know, I, I'm sure there's um, reasons beyond the content. You know, that go beyond like what I'm actually talking about. Um, but just apples to apples, it's about 25, 30 percent more engagement on video than it is in the audio, and they're they're ten times more than the written. You know, I mean, nobody's, I don't say nobody, but, you know, blogs just don't interest people that much. There's, they don't get the some... comments that they used to get. Um, no, and, and they can't and, I mean, some sites it. do. It depends on what they're fostered, right? So, like, I've yeah. thought about that. Um, you know, even, like, with the Indie, IndiePod University, like, do I continue to, you know, is it should it be in Facebook? Should it be a Facebook group? Or should I just open up a, a form on the IndiePodcasters.com website Mm -hmm. And and enable that to be the uh, driving force for the university questions and you know weekly videos and stuff. Um, I, you know I don't know I I think it depend I think the next couple of months could be super pivotal for Facebook, uh, given that they just made a bunch of people mad that they yeah. <laughs> uh, with that new rule change that's coming up in October about them potentially just taking people's stuff down, content down if they don't agree with it basically. Or they feel that it's it creates a potential problem for them, yeah, legal wow. problem for them. So, what that means, I don't know. But what I do know is that if a bunch of people start leaving Facebook, it could start to be a landslide effect over time. Um, and and at that point, like I'm ready to just throw like I'll throw up the I assume like Word, WordPress BBS is still a thing, so like I can integrate a, a form right into our uh, into our site and and boom, like we're ready ready to rock and roll. Yeah, I mean, look, it's, <laughs> like uh, I don't, I don't need Facebook necessarily, but that doesn't mean that everybody's going to go to the site to like post, and it's not you know out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, we, well, I, I, I think I, I guess it depends what the goal is. If the goal is engagement, you you want a forum that makes it easy for people to engage, right? If the goal is just throw it out there and just have volume, <clears throat> it, I guess you're less concerned about that. But in my case. Um, it, my demographic, my client avatar, my ideal client profile, whatever, whatever buzzword you want to use for that basically is on Facebook and Instagram. That's just typically where they are. You know, the, the typically mothers of children, maybe, maybe super late twenties, young thirties into the late forties, which is essentially people who have 10 to 20 year old children. That's where they are at least now. And they're not on, they're not on yeah. Facebook posts and stuff about, you know, some radical conspiracy theory. They're, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're using it as a social platform, typically. Right, right. So I'm not as concerned about, you know, sort of the radical fringe piece of that as, as I think Facebook is in the political year, election year. Um, but I, I, my view is this. Um, we, it's important in business. Forget podcasting. It's important in business to be to have foresight, right? Um, you know, I, I'm just tick, sick of hearing the word pivot, but I'm going to have to use it here. You have to be able to pivot when your environment around you changes, right? Like in my case, I always did online tutoring. I, I was somewhat of a pioneer in it. I was doing it on AOL. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, does that even exist that anymore? Visit. Right, right. I'm just saying. I was doing it on, bra on, on a dial-up. <laughs> it wasn't that easy to do, but I'm just saying I didn't jump into virtual tutoring April 1st when a lot of other people did. Um, but, but now, if you're not doing online delivery in some way, shape, or form, you're really getting left behind. So a lot of people are playing catch-up with that. Uh, but but that's business, you know. That's just being aware of what's going on you know, and being somewhat agile, and being willing to to just deal with sort of the realities of what are happening in your industry and in, in your in your world. Um, I think there are some things where people can look at these things and see them coming, and sometimes they just kind of broadside you a little bit, um, which I think is why it's important, at least in my inexperienced ish opinion to be on multiple platforms, 
Mm-hmm. So like, let's just say Facebook blew up tomorrow. I've still got YouTube. I've still got my WordPress site and my websites. Um, so got other things going on and different pieces of your demographic are going to hang out in different pieces or in different places. Um, I, I guess the, the holy grail of what I do, and I think what you do to a degree for sure, is getting my people to become trumpets for what I do, right? Like yeah. what I want is people saying, well, I read this blog or, well, I listened to this podcast. It was so awesome. And now they're telling all their friends about it. Because in my, in my situation, I'll throw this out there. Where do you think the most common place, or at least normally speaking, people are going to listen to my educational podcast? Where are they going to listen to your Yeah, your where's podcast? the most common place? Now, I know this from polling people. I, mean, I just said, pro- where do you probably usually listen driving to? in the car. Yes, or yeah. one, that's, that was actually two. Guess what one? Well, now that's one. Uh, probably to, mowing the lawn mm, right yeah, now. No, no, not mowing no? the lawn. Shower? Well, no, th- think back into like, let's think, f- flash back to say walk. February. No, no, no. So you got a nine-year-old kid. What do you typically do after school? You drive him to karate. You drive him to gymnastics. You drive him to yeah. dance. You drive him to art school. You drive him to guitar lessons. You drive him to whatever. And I said, I did this for years as a parent. And, and mm-hmm. you're kind of coming to that window, we'll too, get, right? We'll get there right, right. someday. You, you're, you're, <laughs> well, try, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me predict let, your future, Joe. Normal, Here's yeah. what happens, right? <laughs> you drive somewhere where they have a 30-minute lesson, okay? Yep. Or a 40-minute lesson. And you live 15 minutes away. So, so if you look at the math, yeah, right, it there. doesn't make any sense. So either I mean, you find I'm bringing it, my laptop at that point. Exactly. You either find an errand to do right around where the art school, karate school, musical, fill in the blank is. And if, yeah. if, if you're a parent, if anybody's a parent listening, they're going, yeah, 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 I hear you, Steve. Um, and, or you just sit there in the waiting room, whatever, talking to the other moms and dads. So what I'm getting a lot of is the parents are sitting in the car, either on their phone or nowadays, you know, with the Bluetooth, you're plugging the listening, you know, you're listening in your car coming off the phone that's where i get my biggest listenership is Mm. people who used to be stuck in waiting rooms parking lots driving errands while their kid or one kid or two kids were in their activities shuffling between them so to a degree i tailored the podcast for that that uh listening parameter right so my podcasts are short nine to twelve minutes occasionally i'll go over occasionally less but Typically, I shoot for about 10. Why? Because that's about the amount of time, not an attention span, but the amount of time literally they have to listen. Right, right. And they don't want to, like, I hate picking up podcasts in the middle of where I was. Well, and, they're, and they're, pr- I've never actually pulled this. It'd be an interesting question. Like, if you get eight minutes in and you got three minutes left, do you even bother to go back and listen? I I don't know. I'm going to just say probably I mean, I not. do. Usually what I'll do is I'll hit the rewind button like two or three times, like, t- like yeah, go back 45 yeah. seconds just so I can, like, refresh on where I was. Uh, but generally speaking, I don't like to do that. I just do it because yeah, I, you kind of lose I the flow. It's like, it's like coming into a movie two thirds of the yeah, way. Yeah, you know, you don't much, get the build yeah. up. You don't have like the whole sort of vibe. So, to to some degree, it hasn't changed my content, and it really hasn't changed my delivery as on audio and stuff as I'm doing it. But mm-hmm. it's 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 I'm trying to stay really on point. Here's what I'm gonna, it's, it's classic teaching protocol. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Let me tell it to you. Let me tell you what I just told you. See you next week. <laughs> so, no, I, I mean and and obviously that works because like, that's why they do it in schools right that's why it's a thing uh it's a it's a process yes um socratic method it's actually yeah it's officially yeah, called. yeah, yes. yeah. no i i mean i think all that's great and and i mean there's definitely more that we could dive into into there and uh what you know what what message do you have for anybody who's uh trying to send their kid back to school right now and i don't know because everybody seems to be all over the place like i see people sending Mm -hmm. people to school some some of them aren't like i know we're not we're not sending ava to school this year we we bought a home teaching kit uh for for for, we're we were going to do pre-k but i think we went with kindergarten um because she she scored high enough on the test to to warrant it, so she got the part of genius, genius. Yeah, right. <laughs> or did she get that from her mom? I'm not sure. I, I don't know the, the brain <laughs> thing. I don't know. People tell me I'm smart. I don't. I don't feel that smart most of the time. <laughs> All right, well, that's another discussion. Yeah, it is Wisdom Wednesday, right? So it's, it is uh, what. Yes, it is. It is. I'm smart enough to name it go. that. <laughs> um, but like, where, where, where? 
what what can parent like what can parents do to help support on the virtual end of it? Because uh, sending them me, to school was still like the, the basically yeah. the same as it was. Well, let, was. let me let me let me start with this, and I'll address that very directly. This is an abnormal situation, no question, right? Yeah. But let's just for a moment. There was always things going on outside of school. Kids always kids have been homework since. Since I, I wasn't doing it, I know. Right, right, whatever. I mean, right. Since, <laughs> since little Joe was, you know, playing basketball instead of doing homework. I yeah. mean, people have had homework since since Greece. Um, so the fact that some it goes back that far. Well, that's where Socratic method comes from. Yes. Wow. Greece, oh, well, wow. Greece handed off to Rome. Rome handed off to Europe. Europe handed off to England. England came here. So the sort of ideology huh. of our education system goes back to Greece. Yeah, how about that? You, know, you hang around with me long enough. This is wisdom. See, you That's wanted wisdom. I'm giving you yeah, wisdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a 4,000-year-old system. So anyway, here, here's, here's what I'm saying is, yes, the day that 7.30 to 2.30 plus or minus time frame is different or certainly adjusted right now, right? It's altered. But there's always been that after school to when they ever to go to sleep window where kids were having to do homework, having to do projects, having to do whatever. So... It isn't like that never existed. It's just been amplified. So one of the things I've talked about, and I've done several podcasts on this and variants of it, is structure. I have a whole discussion I could do, five major structures that everybody should have in their home learning environment. Okay, um, Just super briefly, a physical structure, a time structure, an academic structure, a accountability structure and a support structure. Those are the five. I could talk about it. I could write a book about each one. <laughs> but but that's the key. And the thing is that you can't necessarily just dump them, you know, like, okay, it's 8 o'clock tonight. Bang, we're starting structure right now. These are things you have to teach. It has to become sort of a culture within your home. Right? If, if you're a kind of parent, you know, some parents are very lax. Some people are very, parents are very disciplined. I'm not going to judge that in any way. But you can't be a very lax parent and all of a sudden one day super, become a super disciplinarian. Right. It just doesn't work, right? It's, the kids, they're like, what? I'm not listening to that. So you, this, it's the same way with his academic structures. You have to say, okay, we're going we're gonna to put this in place. We're going to work it out. We're going to make it work. It has to become kind of a, a family, almost like a dialogue. But yeah, definitely. younger kid, you know, look, a, a six, seven-year-old, it, the workload isn't that advanced. It's probably stuff parents can handle. But when you got a sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and certainly a high school kid, where the parents, it's outpacing the parents' ability to teach it. So the parents are now completely in a management role. They, they're not going to be in a, a pedagogical role because they don't necessarily understand the math or the science or the history necessarily. So now they're in more of a management role. So the older the children get, the more critical these structures become. Hmm. So, yeah, no, I, not that I'm plugging anything here, but I, I <laughs> no, promise no, go I ahead. sell no, that would really help. Please. No, I, well, I have a, I have a virtual learning plan. I, I, I market. It's a low ticket price, 39 bucks. People, families fill out a survey. Uh, based on the survey, I write up a two or three page report that basically says, here's what I recommend you do day to day. Virtual home learning plan, it's called. And uh, yeah, I, I've moved a ton of them. Um, and not, it's not like people need, yeah. Not like people need every single thing in it all the time, but um, it, it, it's been a big shift in role. It's the it, things that we're asking parents to do are not things that they've, um, I don't say they're certainly not incapable of it, but they're not accustomed to doing it. But, but I don't think that's, it's not as drastic as black and white. You know, it's not like it was never and now always. It, it, it's a continuum somewhere along the way. Yeah, um, I th I think what's harder, frankly, is just trying to keep kids engaged. You know, like it's tough to stare at a computer for six hours. Being in a classroom, you know, you're walking around. Every once in a while, it breaks. You got friends there. You've got some human interaction, some socialization. Especially on the younger end. Right, right. You got recess. You got lunch. You know, you got whatever t hall time. You know, just staring at a computer and like you know, on whatever platform it happens to be. I mean, that's. That can be educational for sure, but you subtract out all the other things that students or kids enjoy about school, hanging with their friends, obviously, um, interacting with their friends, you know, just being part of something like kind of larger than themselves. I think that's where a lot of the stress comes in. Yeah. You know, I mean, on that level. 
It's almost the same thing. Like, listen, w- would you rather be, uh, you know, do an Icon 6 live or would you rather do it virtually? I, I've got to think 100% live, right? I, wa- I wanted to do it live. We yeah. were going to do it here in the, in I the know. Back- it's, it's, oh, wait. Oh, that, that's backyard uh, behind me. Casa, and- Casa Pardo. <laughs> yeah, here in the house. But, but, but uh, I'm saying just from a house, vibe but, standpoint, right? Like, because, yeah. you know, it's just, it's just more fun. It's, it's more, you know, you just feel more connected. It's just everything, you know? Yeah, we're hoping well, yeah. to recreate a lot of that same same feeling. I mean, we've done a good job of, of creating that with the virtual events that we've done uh, through the comments coming in and post, you know, putting mm-hmm. them up on the screen and interacting that way. So it's 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 worked, but I, I'm really hoping. Like I, I I think I think we got it, but I'm really hopeful that the the zoom, you know going the Zoom route this time and and doing it in there. Uh, will enable us to to have even another level, another layer. It's, of you know what it is? It's, it's like one of the what's the saying? Like a, a bad day fishing is better than a good day at work. Yeah, right. Or whatever. <laughs> so like I, I'm going to coin a phrase here. Like a bad day at Icon Six online is better than a good day anywhere else. <laughs> yeah, I, ding ding. It's a t-shirt. Absol- Put that. Out. You can sell a t-shirt. Yeah, right? we got, I, I, we'll, we'll co-brand that, Joe. We're be- we're better than going to the dentist. <laughs> yeah, hey, you got your podcast five. Your I got that shirt. Yeah, it's, it's actually it's over here. I go get it for you. The um, <laughs> but 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 it's uh, what I'm saying is it's you know same thing. Sports. You know, I'm watching the Phillies last night, and and it's like. It's not the same when there's they got the cutouts in the stands. It's yeah, like, it's not the same. Because it's like I'm somebody they haven't out. allowed them to open up like a certain percentage of of the stadium. And I think it's. I it's, mean, certain it, states seem to have done that. Yeah, I think. so I, I I think it's a safer than sorry thing. Uh, but I mean, like it's a big stadium. Like yeah, if you I know. just let like twenty percent of the like twenty percent of the seats be sold. And you space them out enough, like I can't see how that would be any different than outside. literally going under a tent. Yeah, and it's outside, going under a tent and eating with a bunch of other people yeah. all around you. Like that seems, or going way to a more restaurant risky and than... three feet from another table, right? Yeah. So, and and everybody's got their mask off and they're chewing and they're spitting yeah. and they're talking <laughs> and they, you know, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So to me, like I, I would actually feel safer at the bit, kind of like how people feel they say they feel safer at Disney World than they do outside of Disney. World in Florida, hmm. uh, especially in the months leading up to. I mean, right now I haven't numbers lately, but but yeah, because everyone has to wear a mask there. Like you go down into like know Walmart cleaning, and right? like yeah. Yeah, most people have a mask. And well, do you but, want but, to be the person to tell that person not to? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. Know. I don't need. I don't need that kind of trouble in my uh, drama in my I life. Know. Well, but, right? but my point is, is the experience <laughs> is different, right? The just the human experience is different. Uh, it but it's the same thing. Look, it's the same thing with tutoring. I, you know, I have an office. I have a classroom. I have physical space. I tutor in. I haven't been able to use it for four or five months, and everything's been online. You know, I, I'm mm-hmm. getting like I've got to get a new prescription here because my <laughs> eyes are like eh, from being online so much. But it, it, you know, it, well, what are we going to do? You know, you can either complain about it or just do it, right? So yeah, yeah, you got to dig in and, and do it. So um, how can everyone get in contact with you, Stephen? Easiest way, uh, makethegrade.net, www.makethegrade.net is my website. It sort of houses everything. Uh, I'll plug, can I, pl- I'm going to plug another event yeah. next Thursday night, yeah, uh, which it. is September 10th. I don't know when this goes live. Are we live? It's a, live we're live, live right now. Yeah. Oh, we're live, live, live. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we haven't had any comments come through, even but we have been live. If yeah. I messed up, you had like a cough button. Yeah, good thing uh, I wasn't cursing. <laughs> I, I don't use a lot of bad language, but uh, Thursday, Thursday, September 10th, and, I, and I'm going to plug Joe for a second after this. Oh. I'm doing a virtual uh, back to school summit. Uh, there are six speakers. Yeah, ring that bell. There are six speakers. Uh, we're going to cover a very broad bandwidth of a lot of things parents are going to know about this back to school. Uh, some we kind of hinted at in, you know, five, ten minutes ago. Um, it's free. It's make the grade dot school. Easy one to remember. Make the grade dot school. It's free, but you do have to register. It's going to be streamed into a a Facebook group of all things, and guess where I learned how to run a summit? Yeah, Joe and Pardo, Tim Gillette, Tim Gillette. <laughs> off standing off camera. Yeah, well, Tim, Tim Gillette's Gillette. over there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah Tim. I, you know, listen, thank you. So you know, Joe had a great oh, course, you. great workshop. Um, you know how to put it together, how to get sponsors, how to bring in speakers, how to execute it. Um, so you know, this this like I was talking about before, getting mentoring. You know, when you you need, you know, would have taken me, I probably could have pulled this off, but this made it so much easier. 
so much, especially the sponsors. Some of the tips they gave for that were really spot on. Um, but that's coming up. And then, you know, my email, S-G-R-E-E-N-E at makethegrade.net. Probably the three easiest ways. I'm all over social media as much as an old guy like me can be. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you could probably find me there. But I, you know, I'm big on, uh, you know, if somebody writes me, I'll write back. I'm, 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 I never uh, dip. So that's what my kid told me, dip. You know what that means, Joe? Uh, no, I don't actually. Okay, apparently, I'm dipping. I, I didn't know. I think dip. I'm thinking like dancing, you know. But uh, or uh, like something you stick a chip in. But apparently, dipping is when somebody's like reaching out to you and you don't write back, uh, or you end the conversation. You know, sometimes you get these endless text conversations. Yeah. The person who ended it, ended it dipped. They did. They dipped out. Yeah. No, yeah. It's I like get if that. you and I, I are like sense. chatting, like all of a sudden you don't hear from me anymore. I dipped. <laughs> yeah, it's so it's so funny because like when when I hear the word dip, I think of the the nasty habit of uh, dipping. Yeah, the double uh, dip. tobacco. Oh, oh, oh no, no, the no, tobacco no. thing. It's yeah, that's the cheek. first thing, and I I don't know why because it's not me or anyone in my family or anything, but just, yeah. So I don't know. Um, <laughs> I didn't know that was dipping either. I think yeah, I think of the Seinfeld. You thing. double dipped your chip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. That's like having your mouth and everybody else's tip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty well. Yeah, <laughs> and right now that's an uh, absolute no. Yeah, no. yeah, you won't do that. No, no, no. no. Uh, so a- anyway, th- Stephen, thank you so much for coming here on the Indie Pod Daily Show. It's been it great having Wednesday. you. Thank you for the accolades. Um, and it, actually, the the course that you talked about with me and Tim, if you want access to that, uh, go. You can join the uh, the IndiePod University because it's actually in there. All oh. four modules are streaming in there, so you can uh, wa- go back and watch and learn, and then uh, reach out to me and Tim, and, and we can work with you one on one with it. Uh, so yeah, so it, it it's one of the added benefits of being in the the university is those types of courses, and there's more to come. Speaking of which, uh, I'll probably talk more about it, but I think we're gonna our next one's gonna be show notes, uh, our next workshop on the mm. third Thursday uh, of September. It'll be the seventeenth. Yeah, like a one off one. Yeah, so we'll, it'll be a one hour workshop. Um, so that'll probably go on sale. Let me, let me say one thing about that shortly because after. I got to tell I think like a lot of podcasters, I sure changed my show notes for a long time. Where what I would do was I would just basically I would put a link and say, click here to see the blog. And for whatever, maybe I was lazy or just had so much going on. Um, I really didn't write specific show notes. And I've had a lot of guests, and I did, I was good at it when I had guests. You know, like a little bio, a little, you know, quote box and stuff. Um, I don't know if it was just because of the longevity of the podcast and my trajectory was going like it was, but the, the the subscriber and the download numbers definitely went up when I put that extra 15, 30, 60 minutes into writing better, more uh, mindful show notes. Yeah, I know. It's something I got to get get on, especially with this show. I mean, going daily makes it kind of difficult because – going live is so much easier than than like yeah. having to write out a whole bunch of notes and things especially when you have guests so it's something i definitely got to come back around and maybe what we'll, we'll i'll do um maybe towards the end of the year actually i have a meeting with a potential um uh intern for indie pod mm-hmm. so uh so maybe i'll look at getting a, a, another intern or two and have them <laughs> go back that means and- you've arrived when you have an intern you've arrived Right. Well, this inter- this potential <laughs> intern, uh, you know, w- is uh, going to Harvard. So, oh, so how about ooh, that, right? Ivy like, League intern. Ooh, heck ooh, yeah! Ooh, right. Ooh. That's how we do. We do it big. So, uh, so yeah. So we'll we'll see. I oh, we'll probably be. There we no, go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got toys here too. Oh yeah, I can I can hit some <laughs> hit some claps. Um, uh, John, yeah, listen, so we'll, I appreciate we'll it. I, I, I hope, uh, you know, what I said was able to help people. And, Absolutely. I you think know, my I think experience is what it is. But, you know, I started completely from the ground up. I started with nothing. I'm a year later. I'm, I'm producing podcasts. I'm comfortable with it. I've had some great guests on. I've met the community is really cool. I mean, the icon. I've met so many just nice, generous, uh, friendly people in this little space. You know, it's not thousands of them, but, you know. You, Ross, We're Tim, there. Regina, I mean, all these people are just really nice and genuine and, you know, happy to help. So it's it's been really good that way. Appreciate yeah. being included in it. 
Well, I mean, people is the one thing that one of the few things I, I pride myself on is being able to bring. I love bringing people together. I love bringing awesome people together. And uh, you are one of those people, Steven. So I'm so glad that we've been able to connect and, and work together. And uh, I'm looking forward to hearing how big of a success your event is on the t it's on the 10th, yeah, right? 10, 9, 10. Isn't that, that the day before your birthday? Awesome. Was it Tim's birthday? Mine's fifteenth. I think it's the day before Tim's birthday. Yeah, Tim's was the eleventh. Yours the fifteenth. Yeah. Mine's the eighteenth. We got the triumvirate. <laughs> the triumvirate. Yeah, I'm definitely going to Love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I knew we were all on the same uh, short window there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So well, that's, that's, that's a good way to end fun. this. Yeah, that's about I as wise so. as we're going to get. Three, three incredibly <laughs> smart Virgos here. So. Uh, well, uh, if you've enjoyed this episode of the Indie Pod Daily Show, please share it with the podcaster in your life. Don't forget, Icon 6 is happening September 12th and 13th over in a Zoom room. So it'll be different. It's different than what we're doing right here and what we've done with the last eight uh, virtual conferences that we've done in the indie pod community. Uh, and you can get your merch for icon six limited edition mm -hmm. merch over at your icon Uh, there's the iconic shirt, uh, with the branding, the indie pod con virtual branding on the sleeve, uh, which won't be available after the, uh, after this, mm -hmm. after this event. So yeah, if you want to grab yeah. that, that is available uh as well as if you want to learn how to launch grow and monetize your podcast and get access to over 150 hours of uh, video resources for your podcast weekly uh, group coaching calls which we got to get you in there steven yeah, uh one yeah. of these one of these weeks uh, i gotta actually send out an email because one's happening tonight oh. <laughs> so so uh yeah tonight at 8 p.m eastern is uh is our weekly uh, coaching call and group coaching call. So uh, you can get your questions answered and work with uh, me, work with the people that come to the call, uh, as well as uh, many other resources that are available over there. So if you're looking to take your podcast to the next level, go over to IndiePodU.com and get signed up and join our growing amount of students. Everyone, I hope you have a great uh, night, and we will see you tomorrow for Training Thursday, where I will be sitting down uh, with Vince Warnock, uh, and we will be discussing his podcasting efforts and how we can help him move the needle faster with his podcast. Take care, everyone. Thanks again, Stephen.